guys, welcome to the channel, it's Adam with ND72. So today we're back with my SLK32. And as you see, I have my science coat on, because we're going to be doing a little bit of a science experiment. So, mainly this started, because there was a few messages, I was getting a few complaints I was getting as people were looking into the footage of my force induction inner chiller system. They were saying my lines are way too small for my inner cooler going back. They also were saying, which they were 100% right with, my lines are right next to my exhaust as it goes back to my tank. So today, we're going to see if it even matters the length and the size, a diameter of my hoses. Now, right now what I have is a factory 5 8 more or less, a little bit of a hotchbosh, going all the way back from supercharger to the tank. So today we're going to be upgrading everything to 3 quarters. So 3 quarters is a noticeable difference between what is in there. I bought a series of fittings because we're also going to make everything easier to serviceable. So what we're going to be doing today also is I have a 3 quarter line and I have AN fittings. We're going to make it so when I have to break stuff loose or whatever, it's serviceable and it's easy to come off. I don't have to do the warm clips. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. It should eliminate a lot of leaks if I ever do have any. And it's going to make it a lot more serviceable. And the flow should go Night and day difference of what everyone's saying. So my temperature should even be colder. But I'm a little skeptic on that. That's just me. I don't think that me upgrading to three quarter inch lines or even one inch lines is going to matter too much on my system. But heck, I'm, wi I'm willing to try it for science. And these don't cost that much. Maybe I'm going to be in roughly $200 of hoses and lines and all that stuff. But it's for science. So we're going to test it out today. We're going to go over my system really quick. And then we're going to kind of go over all the stuff I bought, all this stuff you can literally get off Amazon or at Lowe's or just a random guy on Facebook. That's where I'm getting some of my stuff. We won't go into that, but we're going to see if it actually makes any difference. So we're going to go over what the flow is. So I'm going to put a little GoPro on my tank. We'll see how much it shoots out. We'll see if the flow kind of gets any better. And we'll actually do some more data logging and see our temps because we already know what our previous temps are. We're going to see if we can get any colder. Now, if we do this and then my temps go down to air intake temperatures okay if my air intake temperatures after doing this are now in the 30 degree fahrenheit in a 95 degree day then 100 percent this worked but if we don't see anything because the previous best was 44 degrees at 95 degree fahrenheit days okay if we can't get any better than that or if the flow doesn't look any better then all this really did was make it convenient to maintenance and service. That's really it. But still, for science, at least you know not to spend your hard-earned money and just use factory 5.8s. But let's get to it and see how my setup is right now. All right, so we're in the trunk area. We're gonna kind of look at the flow and see how much it's shooting, and then we'll compare when we go bigger lines. So right now with two pumps on, it's flowing pretty good. Now it's not like smashing into the wall over there, but still pretty good. So we'll see if it actually becomes more of a stronger flow or what happens once we upgrade the lines. So sadly, the proper way to upgrade these lines is we gotta rip off my whole supercharger and we're gonna try to upgrade from literally the intercooler all the way back. So now we're gonna start draining fluid, upgrade or unbolting and pulling off the supercharger and changing all the fittings. I'm not gonna show a step-by-step -step of doing it because I've showed multiple times how to pull a supercharger off. So we'll do like a, a quick little, I'll put the camera up, you just watch me do it. Maybe I hit things with a hammer and we'll just knock it out.
All right, so we got the supercharger all off. We got it over here, it flipped over. Now, some of you guys might not know, back in the day, I had to get it thermal coated from Needs Wings. It is chipping off a little bit, but it's been like three or four years. So we're gonna clean this whole thing off because we need to get these lines off. They're now gonna be gone and we're changing these fittings over here. Also, what we got to even help out with more thermal coating, something I got back there, we're gonna try a nice blanket. But let me clean everything off and throw it all on. All right, so we pulled the ends out. So basically here is a different factory and the new ones we're going to. So as you can see, the new ones were, these are factory. All right, it's basically a barb fitting. This is gonna be the same factory where it's gonna be Factory end coming out to three and a quarter inch hose. You could just see there's a big step up in there and there's a pretty good comparison of like how big it is. So it's gonna be a big upgrade and we're going all the way to the supercharger. Now I could have done this not all the way at the supercharger, but I just, these aren't that hard to take out. So we're gonna knock it in as long as this thread's in here. Yeah, it'll thread in there. So we're gonna throw some Teflon tape and get that bag girl on there. Okay, so the other thing, like I said, we're gonna do an insulating and that's what I got right here. Woo! So from Amazon again, I just got some foam padding that is basically like sticky and it's got reflective aluminum tape on there. I'm just gonna put this all over the bottom of the intercooler to help resist some of the heat that's gonna be coming up and hopefully to insulate it a lot better. And those lines that we put on there, super effing and easy, but I wanna get the lines coming out, then I'm gonna wrap the whole intercooler and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we got the blanket cut up and all on there. It does not stick the best. It does really good on the flat, but on the curves, I got to push down pretty hard. So we're going to push it down really hard, and then we're just going to literally just put it right back in the car. And no matter what, this blanket should help insulate and help radiate, knock off some of the heat that goes to it. Maybe it'll do nothing, but it really can't, like, add more heat, I don't think. One thing I will have to check out is make sure I don't go over here and we get messing up on the gaskets, but... It's all good. And also, I made my lines like eight feet long over here because I don't know exactly my routing. And I could always cut this back. But once I throw the supercharger on there, I can't really add more easily. So we're going to just start knocking it out, putting it on, and see how it looks. Okay, we got everything bolted back on, supercharger. So how I'm doing my lines, I want this one to be my ice cold from the chiller. And this one to be the hot line. I haven't decided if it's going to go through here or just drape it over here. My only concern about over here is I don't want it to nick anything and melt. So, we're going to deal with it one step at a time. So right now we need to make this line go to the chiller. The goal is not to have a crap load of joints, not to have a crap load of bends, not to have a crap load of everything. So I'm hoping I cut enough to go straight to this chiller right here. That's what we're hoping, which it shouldn't be that much of a bend. It should just kind of go down and over, and that will eliminate a lot of stuff. So we're going to start ripping off the old line, and then go right back with that one. All right, so we got the top all done. It's all insulated and routed. It goes down there. Everything fits. I'm still not sure about this side, but this is the one that matters. That's the actual cold, ice cold side that I'll go down to there. And then all the bottoms done, I'll show you that right now. Let me just shut this hook. All right, so we got all the bottom stuff. The Mainly what we're gonna be changing up over here is, yeah, clearly we make the hoses bigger, but we're gonna get it away from the exhaust over here. We're gonna route it more along this way and then drop it back in and come all the way back. Same kind of thing. And if you know, I already have this hose is pretty much already upgraded just because I can't remember why I did it. So it's got a brancher from right here and then this one will go all the way up to the tank. So pretty simple and they're pretty much just a straight shot, no weird bends. So we'll just gain some much of just like not being so close to the exhaust. Even though the shield's here a little bit, it still can't help. So we're gonna shoot it all the way over. And don't worry, I got plenty of hose to do that. I literally got on Facebook Marketplace I don't know where the guy got it or how the guy got it, but I got well over 75 feet for 75 bucks. And it's pretty good hose we're using. 3.8, 19.1 mils, not bad, pretty good stuff. So yeah, we're gonna go all the way back now and start getting rid of all, all this rigmarole. Okay, so this is most of my trash stuff that I took out. I had to cut up a lot of other hoses and lines just to get fittings off. But as you can see, like look it, this is what we removed. Like these had all these effing bends that are just causes restriction and keeps stepping down from five eighths and smaller. And like, these are all the factory, like look at all these bends that were on there. And now we're almost completely straight. And there is a crap load of almost nineties, nineties, nineties. Look at straight up nineties, just to go around frames and all that stuff. But now it's so much more straight and mainstream. All right, so it's looking a lot more cleaner. We now have like a little break off area over there. And then now they wrap around. And then it basically goes all the way back straight forward. Just this is the big difference is now we go over here instead of along the exhaust. So let's drop it down to see what the flow is. 
All right, there's no need to turn the car on, but holy crap, I can hear that from here. That sounds so much more powerful. All right, let's go and look. He's... Whoa, oh yeah. That is looking a lot stronger, and you can just hear it smashing like into there a lot louder. So we're going to fill up a little bit more coolant in there, and then fire this bad girl up and let it sit for a little bit. All right, so we just fired her up. We're going to get the whole graph I'm going to set up so we can monitor it. It's on like the normal high as everything it would be. All right, so we're starting off at 62, and it's already dropping, and it is 92 outside right now. So we're going to let it sit for a little bit and see how cold it gets. So after only a couple minutes, we already dropped down to 53. That is a lot better. See, that's where we started. This is only a few minutes. Let it keep going because it keeps dropping. All right, guys, look what it is. Great, great success. 39 and still dropping. So now we're at 39 degrees air intake temp. That is air intake temperature. Let's look at our in-tank water. 43 degrees, 42 degrees in-tank water. All right, so we're gonna do this nice little test drive in Mexico. Uh, we're starting off at 50 degrees. I don't know if you can even see that. I'm gonna try to get closer. 50 degrees air intake temps. We're gonna, we've been hitting three or four pulls already. We're gonna do another little 20 pull. Nothing too crazy, just just look at some data and stuff like that. And it's always fun to do a nice little Mexico pool with my new camera. Not bad at all. That was, as you can see, we shot up definitely a little bit. It's about 116. It's 96 effing degrees out, but that really wasn't bad. Let's go do one more. It's nice that with this system, the chill down, it's pretty quick. We're already at like 57. I don't know if you can even see it, but you can go do pull to pull. Pretty effing nice, but let's go park and check it all out. Okay, so we took the car for a drive and holy poop, it's even hotter than normal out here in sunny Mexico, even with, for scientist Adam, it is about 97 degrees out right now. And still, air intake starting, we're in the low 40s. So we did the nice little pool, we're doing some more fun stuff, and I will say, upgrading the lines, 100%, that is proven to work. Because now, granted, I did get rid of a lot of bends and all that stuff, but upgrading the lines from 5 eighths to 3 quarters, dropped this thing down at least maybe what seven degrees colder just from doing effing lines that is a big improvement in air intake temperatures not just coolant temperatures or water temperatures and air intake temperatures those are the ones that matter so super happy with it and you can get line like literally for under 200 bucks this job was to do you could do it at your house you pull off your supercharger you change those fittings you buy them off amazon and then it's just literally three quarter inch hose now, maybe you could go up to one inch hose and it'll be a little better, but I'm gonna tell you why I can't go up to any bigger hose. Let me show you. So as you see, I have just enough room for three quarter inch hose coming out of there. So if I would try to go up to an inch or anything bigger, it would be rubbing on too much stuff and it would not even F and do it. So for an SLK32 Crossfire, three quarters is kind of the biggest I recommend. And maybe with the E55s, you could go a little bit bigger because you might have more room over here. But for the Crossfires and SLKs, Three quarters is the most I would ever say to go to. So, scientist Adam has proven that those hose work. I'm super impressed with it. I'm impressed by my whole force induction inner chiller system. And just remember, if you guys want this exact same system for either your SLK E55 CLS or any car, does not have to be a Mercedes that runs a liquid, a water to air intercooler setup, BMWs, Trackhawks, tons of the cars do it, go into force induction inner chillers website use coupon code nd72 to save yourself some cash so remember trackhawk bmw chevy mercedes whatever my coupon code will work to save you some money off on their websites and these kits i bought a universal one it's a stage one they're not that cheap but they come with a lot of effing stuff and as you can see mine works it is 97 almost 100 degrees at some point today and my air intake temperatures we're 50 below, 40, low 40s most of it. So I'm super happy about that. 
So if you like this video and you like my channel and you want more stuff with my SLK32 or E55 or even my SL55 which is coming up and I have another special secret project that I've been collecting parts for that is going to make this car look like a slow little booger. But if you like all that stuff, you want more to come, throw a like down, subscribe, share it with your friends, put a comment. It all does help. And soon, yes, I'll be having merchandise. We have a few shirts coming and some actual hard products. But hopefully you guys like the channel. Catch you guys later. Remember this Adam. Science Man Adam from ND72.